Okay. So, hey, uh, musician guy. Hey, 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 you. Ven a la fiesta. What's wrong with you? Come on. I was practicing. Oh, Leo's here. Leo's here. Oh, okay. Shoot. Let's do the intro and then we'll just grab okay. Leo. Bring <laughs> him right. on. All right. Hey, y'all. Welcome to another exciting, fantastic, and wonderful episode of Rebel Sage Perspectives. I'm your sage, Rudy. And to my other screen is your rebel michelle hey guys <laughs> what's up so hey, hey, today that intro that? was almost not cheesy ah, almost, <laughs> almost almost I, <laughs> i'm working on my cheese factor all right cool. so okay <laughs> listeners we are gonna grab our guest leo hernandez actor extraordinaire and throw him into the fire so i hope y'all enjoyed that hope leo's not mad too <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. You need to edit that part out. That's not nice. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Okay. Hello. Okay. It takes a minute for everything to connect. Leo. Hey. Leo, you're on and you're live. And this is a new thing we decided to do to you this morning. Don't, don't worry, not live out to the world, but we don't edit. So, I mean, hey, whatever. Essentially live. <laughs> At the end of the day. It is what it is. Absolutely. Right absolutely. on, right on. So, Leo. Yes. How long have you been acting? Uh, well, it's been quite a while, to be honest with you. I technically first started, and like this is a very, very technical sense, um, started when I was like five years old, essentially. Um, so my sister went to uh, Berkeley and... Um, when she would come home during the summers, because uh, I'm originally from Texas, um, she would bring a video camera and all of my brothers and sisters would reenact uh, scenes from movies. Uh, so like we did like Good, the Bad, the Ugly. Um, I was Al Pacino in Heat, uh, nice. as a five-year-old. Um, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, awesome. <laughs> you know, just reenacting that stuff. So that like was kind of where the seed was planted of like wanting to get into it. Um, and then once, you know, middle school came around, um, I did, you know, the school play and then right from high school on and then just kind of moving forward is where it moved me to where I was. So, yeah. Well, amazing. <clears throat> I also started acting really young, like, but I think I was like eight mm. and I'm from Texas too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Big Garland, Texas. Oh, I'm, I'm from, uh, I'm actually from Crowley, Texas, which is like outside of um, okay. where, um, like the Dallas Fort Worth area, Fort Worth. I say Fort Worth all the time. So. Yeah. Um, oh gosh, why am I drawing a blank on her name? The girl from American Idol that oh, Kelly, Kelly Clarkson, Clarkson is from. Yeah, Burleson. she's from. Oh, Burleson. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was. Uh, she was from. Crowley. It, very, very close. Incredibly close yeah, to that area. Yeah. I think I have friends there or something. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, and she's the OG, right? Like she's like the real. Real like yeah it. she was the she was the one from way back she's the first no she was the first yeah. and the yeah. only the first, the first yeah. second place winner to conquer the world yeah yes and <laughs> who didn't take place. that was terrible who, she was second no behind. she was first she was first because <laughs> justin guarini lost that year oh okay see i get uh, it mixed up who was with, the one that was um, second and then, but then so just, just in guarini they did a show they did a movie together on disney at some point too <laughs> about that I thought oh. was very interesting. Yeah, awesome. she definitely I, got, won. I got the myth. I got the myth wrong then. Yeah, because yeah. she's amazing. Yeah, and well, Carrie Underwood was on there too, right? Yes, yes. Not, she came. She came a little bit later. Though. No, no, she came a little yeah. bit later. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I don't watch that actually very much, but uh, <laughs> neither do I. Clear, clearly, <laughs> because my facts are all insanely wrong, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I wouldn't be able to act my way out of a bag today, would I? <laughs> All right. Well, here we are. <laughs> um, but anyway, so you started really, really, really early. And well, what, wait, how I, has I, your path? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no. Well, because I had a question before. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, how long How long have you been in L.A., Leo? Uh, roughly about 10 years, 10, 11 years, I think. 11 years. Right on. Right on. Yeah. 
So um, now when I was, uh, I was acting probably in the, in the uh, early to mid 2000s. And at that point, there was a, a real upsurge in um, the Latin community as far as gaining recognition in the industry and stuff like that. And I was wondering, just because I've kind of been out of it for so long, but then at the same time, you know, I've reached out and uh, we've had some some friends on the show, like my agent and some other actors that I work with. I was just wondering how, um, because we saw your short. So it's kind of that, you know, how all that's uh, progressed as far as, I mean, you can tell in the last 10 years being there in L.A. as far as the opportunities and and whatnot. Well, uh as you guys know, I'm not a very successful actor. Uh, so, um, no, but, uh, but, but really, um, the progression has just kind of changed just a, a little bit, especially for me specifically, because I'm so ethically ambiguous. Um, uh, a lot of people have said, you know, Filipino, I've got an Indian, I've gotten a lot of things. So when I first started out in the industry, I actually changed my last name uh, to make myself more, um, you know, passing in any way that you couldn't place me uh and yeah but but that's it's kind of weird because like i don't know if you guys know the show psych but james roday the lead of that his name is james rodriguez but like i'm not as white passing as that gentleman is like he is incredibly white passing so uh, when i changed my name uh i was encouraged to change my name uh by um, a lot of people just because they were like, look, it would just kind of limit you out to other roles and whatnot. Now that, um, you know, the, the time has passed and times have changed, I've changed it back to my, my you know, original Hernandez na- last name. And that, I, I don't want to say the opportunities have kind of grown from there. I just think that the idea to be able to write for um, uh, like characters that happen to be Hispanic has kind of grown since there. And I think that that's how it really should be, to be honest with you. That was the, right. one of the things that brought me to um, Legends, the, the, the short that I'm in for the, for the NHMC uh, showcase, is that, uh, that, see, that, sh- that scene has nothing to do with culture. It's just two guys in a room talking, not about culture. And what happens a lot of times in media is uh, uh, culture oftentimes will put put itself in there, which makes it a little bit less digestible. I know that that can be like a controversial ideal, but but for me, I think that that it's important that our stories need to be told, and we just happen to be black. We just happen to be Latino. I think that it's more important to tell a story. And you can tell stories culturally, but I think it's more important to tell stories that are well done. And like I said, that they're that they're not defined by the color of their skin or things like that. That's what makes it more real, more, more, I don't know. You can, the mirror, the idea of acting is we're supposed to hold a mirror up to society and that, and our emotions and things that we're going through are things that people could all see if the story is good. And that's all there really is to it. <laughs> so that's just my own, that's how I viewed it this entire time and that's how i've kind of wanted to maintain viewership of like making sure that the story is pinnacle um to everything because it is so just nice i agree with that yeah at the end of the day the the story is the um is the through line to everybody regardless of where you come from a hundred percent yeah yeah and 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 people need to realize like you know for me i've gotten a lot of I have a huge chip on my shoulder um, because I've gotten a lot of flack for not um, speaking Spanish. Uh, just me been too. My, yeah, I mean, <laughs> a lot, a hundred percent. And uh, and it's um, weirdly enough, it's followed me my entire life. It's not just weirdly. I thought it was like a generational thing, but it's not. Like I, I got it in in you know middle school, in high school, at my jobs. Uh, I had that happen to me a lot of times where people are like, wow, that's, that's so terrible. Like you should know it. Or like I had one gentleman, I was helping out in my job and he was like, boy, you sure are a disgrace to your race. And I said, Hey, we're lucky that I'm at my job. Cause I will literally punch you in the fucking face right now. Cause why, right. how dare you say that to someone Right. casually? Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> it's a, it, like that's very rude to say to it someone. Is very rude. 
just in general. Especially, so, when they, especially when they tell you that in Spanish, it's even worse. <laughs> yeah, he's like, and like I said, it's followed me my entire life. So that that chip on my shoulders kind of like led me to be, I mean, who I am. Unfor- I mean, like I said, I love the language. I think it's amazing and whatnot, but I've just been, it's just kind of irked me every time because like, and unfortunately the, the people who are downing me the most are, is my own race, which is even weirder. Like, which is the, the crux of it all. Um, well, can you, do you know any kitchen Spanish? No, I don't know. None. And, I, I, and you I, cuss I, someone out. I mean, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Pro- probably can, there's that. Can you get to the bathroom? Probably, yeah. Yeah, could definitely. You, could yeah. you ask for food? Yeah. Could you ask for beer? You're Probably. fine. Yeah, I'll be okay. Exactly. Me, I mean, at the end of the day, it really, I know it is fine. I just mean that, like I said, anyone that I've ever encountered where they see my last name and whatnot, they're, they're, it's two things. It's very strange. Oh, okay. Do you speak Spanish? No. <laughs> Why is that your reaction? <laughs> hey, <laughs> human being, don't right. do that because you can't be disgraced by me because you don't know me yet. Like right. it's not, it's not fair. And like I said, I'm, I, it, it is what it is. I have been very lucky to have been in the positions that I've been as far as acting wise goes and, and doing all the things that I have, but it is, um, it is a part of my, my, like I said, the fact that I'm showing up on screen for Latin actors, if they like it or not, it's my blood. So it's me. And that's the progression we need. I'm exactly. Yeah. That's, that's a great attitude. That's a great way to go through it. <laughs> Hey, look, I got, I got one for you though. The okay. next time, the next time someone who's not Latin, like we are, asks you if you speak Spanish, you look at them straight in the eye, just like this, just like she go, no, but I know Mexican judo. <laughs> and they look at you, you say, do you know what that is? And then you say, you don't know if I got a knife. <laughs> you don't know if I got a gun. You don't know what the fuck I got. <laughs> it's that's true. <laughs> It's true. Um, you so. turn it up, turn it, just turn it right on to them <laughs> yeah. and, just watch, just, and just watch them freak out. It's great. I've done it before. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> you probably I have. have, actually. Yeah, I have. Yeah. The best part is when you say it very seriously, like you use your acting chops and really, really punch it to them. You just watch people kind of. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> <laughs> you look Italian, really, you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's crazy though. Okay, so so you write. You write. Um yeah. um how uh, is it just uh kind of because I remember the first time I ever had to write, I was basically helping out at an acting school and the uh the teacher wanted to do a, a public access channel. She said, well, you're going to write for me. I said, okay. She threw me into a room and said, okay, write things. That's kind of the only experience. And, and it was very weird. Now, do you have par- partners or do you? Um, I, I, mean- I do have a writing partner. Um, we, uh, we've been writing sketches like back and forth for the past, uh, I want to say about seven years. Um, and we're just now just starting to kind of packaged together um sketches and whatnot i mostly do i mostly do sketch writing i have written um shorts uh in high school i wrote i wrote a feature but my 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 path with writing has been a very um sporadic thing and kind of comes in it comes and goes in waves but with sketch um i just realized that me and my friend are trying to uh actually set up a pitch uh to try to pitch to um networks and streaming things um so we're just like kind of going back through all the sketches that we've written over the the last seven six seven years and just kind of fine-tuning them and trying to figure out our show structure and just trying to get that out there um so nice so like uh so like your own um like uh I, i'm guessing it's comedy oh yeah 100 percent. so uh so like a sketch comedy show your own show yes basically. yeah i mean so, yeah but kind of conceptually like I don't know if you guys have seen. Um, I think you should leave on uh, on Netflix. But if I've you been have, told to see that. <laughs> if you okay, the show that show is the is the best sketch show I've seen ever in my entire life. But 
you either get it or you don't. It's either That's you really what I was told. <laughs> yeah, it's either you really love it or you really hate it. And I am one of those that really, really, really loves it. But with that being said, Tim Robbins does a really great thing um, as it is his show that sometimes, he, oftentimes he's actually not the lead. And a lot of times with a lot of sketch shows, um, they'll have the, per like it's that person featuring that person. He isn't a lot of them, but uh, there will be like a different lead every now and then and different like features of, of like specific characters who are doing the joke. And that is something that I've loved about that show specifically is because it's, it is his show but he really lets other actors shine like incredibly with just the premises. And that is really hard to do. And he does it brilliantly. So that's something that we, we strive for. We just want to write funny stuff and do funny stuff together that uh, is going to feature us as, as writers and performers, but also being able to kind of say like, hey, it's kind of transcendent of anyone doing it. The scenario itself is what's funny. So right, that's what we're right. hoping for, um, really, in the long run. So kind of it, it, it it's, uh, ultimately it takes a team to get the screen. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, that's that's how we and, you know, we've written separately before, but we kind of were like, we just got to start doing this. And we didn't we didn't get the idea to start pitching until uh, this year. I was like, yeah, we should we should try to pitch it. Yeah. Like, why why yeah. not? We we have all these sketches and we've, we've, we read them and we're like, we think it's funny. You know, we've, we've kind of uh, shown them to some people and they're like, Oh, they, they, they think it's funny. So it's just like, you know, we got to kind of just start fine tuning it and getting it out there. So. <clears throat> and you know, I think that here's kind of the, here's kind of where uh, music and, and the uh, like uh, acting entertainment world have that divide where the technology is kind of, hampering people who, who are you know trying to commercially make music people who are doing sketch comedy or they have a news show or they're producing their own thing the it seems to me that that the um that the business is opening up saying well look look at all these platforms and look we can we can help yeah the uh <laughs> the budgets are are it's weird because like obviously today that big the big announcement of the um of the strike that's about to happen to, for the all the um, the union jobs uh, of the crew uh, sure. was like announced today. Like that's pretty much what's going to be going forward from here. Uh, wow. So like, I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, pretty much what created the golden age of TV of what we know it to be now was the writer's strike in 2008. Um, yeah, I, I was, that was in the, yeah. <laughs> that, that is what made TV what it is today. It, it that's it, it's better than it's ever been ever before this point. But it was because of that writer strike that people were like, "Well, what are these things that we could do? How can we get these done?" And then you had shows like Breaking Bad come after that and stuff like that, where people were like, "Oh, like I'm investing a lot of time into this show, and it's really you know paying off." And that show for me was like the one that that just landed the plane perfectly, as as uh, but many shows can't do. And then from there, it just like started creating this like, you know, uh, HBO started doing um, these great, the great miniseries and like, you know, True Detective and, and uh, The Night Of, like where they're just like, OK, it's like eight episodes. You have to invest eight hours, but that's it. We're out. See you around. And I was like, really? OK, this is cool. Like so like with this and with this new crew strike happening, who knows what's going to happen from here? Like, who knows right. how productions are going to go, what the budgets are going to be. You know, it, it, there's a lot of things in the balance for this this strike. And we have to kind of invest heavily into our crews and stuff like that. Because don't get me wrong, artists as actors, we believe, oh, dying for the art and craft and stuff like that. But no crew should die for the actual art. You know what I mean? No. Like we're, you know, we're actually no, hearing these, no. these, these horror after horror stories are just like, okay, like, let's just let's pull back. Let's, let's pull back on this stuff. Let's, let's really open up the conversation to have, to say, we need to change this whole thing from the ground up and the crew is, is the place to start. So it's exciting. It's an exciting time, but it's also like kind of scary because uh, the, I can't even remember, I can't even remember the names of the two unions, but, but the people that are making the decision are like, they're making a hard bargain. They're like, okay, well, there's a lot of things that we want changed too. So the people who are holding the money are like, We'll see. So it's going to be a pretty, pretty hectic battle. So, well, know. you know, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, uh, the precious few sets that I got to be on, uh, whether I was an extra or a, or a, you know, a featured performer, everybody behind the camera, they're the real magicians. I mean, they make 
the magic. They've made the magic for friggin' almost what two hundred years now. How how long? Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, since yeah. since the beginning of film, the guy that hold that held the light. I mean, so yeah. I, I really hope that they get what what they need to be able to continue to make the magic really 100 percent. there's no there's they no should. doubt about it yeah they already should there's no the hours overtime all that stuff we get it the investors producers are trying to push stuff we get it but like you know it's it's all it all it all takes it takes a team effort it takes a huge village to make a film to get it yeah. to become to even get onto any so sort of service and whatnot like it's just ridiculous to think that that we shouldn't be treating them with the right amount of time and 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 effort and pay and, and the whole thing. I mean, actors, right. every everyone, all all the things. Everyone should be the distrib distribution of wealth should be a lot different than it is currently. So, right here we are. Yeah, you know, it really it should be it should be like uh, it should be <clears throat> like um, like catering on a gig. Who goes first? The crew. Yeah. 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 So here we are. So here we here, are. Here we are. Wow, man, this has been like, wow, from, from your humble beginnings to the ins and outs of, of Hollywood. And man, you, you really, uh, you really opened it up for us. I just, uh, I just have kind of learned over time, like that, that progression is going to happen whether I'm on the train or not. And I need to jump on now. Like I had a lot of weird feelings, man, two, like three years ago, back in like 20, 2018, 2017, when the inclusion wave started becoming a real big deal. Um, like, just like it started to get more featured and stuff like that. And I was like, I feel guilty as an actor a little bit. Like, I was like, this feels weird. I feel like I'm taking jobs from other people and whatnot. And, and you know, I, I was working at my job and, and I talked to a, 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 a Netflix writer and he said, look, don't worry about that. All that's happening is, is that people are writing roles for you. That's literally the only difference that's happening. So these, these, you know, the actors that are, you know, these white actors that are saying that it's harder, blah, blah, blah. All that's happening is just that more people are getting included in the conversation. And that's literally all it. So like, he's like, and also you don't get a lot of handouts in this industry at all. So ride the wave whenever you can. So I'm riding the wave as best ride I possibly the wave, can. Yeah. I am, yeah. I am. You know, if you guys want to put me in whatever production because you think it, it checks the box, that's fine. But it's my job to show you that I'm not checking just the box. That the And at the end of the day, the reality is the cream will rise to the top. If I get put on a show and I'm not good, then that's that. But if I'm good, then it just continues to go from there. It's, ju it's just like anything else. Um, so we just have to make that realization that we're going to get put, we're going to get tested more and more. And we got to be able to not settle for mediocrity. We have to strive for the best stories, the best everything. We can't just settle for second secondary characters. We can't settle for that stuff. We need to be leads and we need to be there. We need to be showing people, hey, like we have emotional depth too. <laughs> like, yeah, there's no, well, there's no also, it. I, think, I think that they're afraid of it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of passion, a lot of passion. Here. Yeah, I get it. I get it. But at the same time, it's like, like why? Like at the end of the day, it's just going to make you more money in your pockets. Like, if That's people true. like it, I mean, and what's even, you know, I mean, like, I mean, horror is having a big thing. Uh, you know, like I said, it all comes down to that, that the money aspect of it. Horror is being, making a big comeback because, I mean, since pretty much since Paranormal Activity, I mean, actually, technically since Blair Witch, but Paranormal was like really kind of, look, you can make a, a, a movie for 10, 10 mil and make 120 mil. And horror has just been sweeping that whole thing. And make so, a lot of people stick with your jiggly camera. Yeah, 100 <laughs> percent. But. But the but the problem is, is that like the unfortunate part that we know as artists is, is that there's a business side to it and there's got to get they got to get butts and seats. And when they get the dollar sign, they're going to make 30 more Fast and Furiouses. They're going to do that because it's getting people in the seats. So the idea is, is that you have to you have to start working with the micro budgets, everything under 10 mil and kind of these other companies distributing out the money in a more even pace. And everyone's everyone's just throwing spaghetti at a wall everyone's throwing a whole entire pot of spaghetti at the wall and seeing what sticks netflix is doing a big job of that and i mean look at um selena right the series yes uh, right yes. but like great great series i loved it i thought the actors in it were tremendous but you're like this is awesome then all of a sudden it's like hey us writers didn't get paid and i was like shit you're just like yeah. damn it like 
it's such a good show. And like Moises Samora, like is like, you know, I stand, I, 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 I you know, I, I want the show to be a thing and stuff like that. And then you hear about the pay and it's like, what are we supposed to do? Like, how are we, it's such a great series. It's, it's good. It's acted well. It's done all this. It's, but then you just get the evil of Netflix and it's like, Shh, uh, like yeah. who do we turn to, you know? Right. Is the idea that just because we're getting our stuff out and selling our soul, that's it. Or should we fight for better rights? And I think we should be fighting for better rights. So here we yeah. are. Hey, you're uh, not alone. You're not alone. We've had guests on the show that have the same, the same views. And, and it really comes down to this. They're good. Uh, and they say the same thing. I'm an artist. I'm gonna put out good art and I'm gonna keep coming at the machine until the machine, uh, until the machine recognizes and mm -hmm. keeps taking me and keeps taking mine and uh, understands that this community and, and all the other communities that are, feel underrepresented and that when we look at you know, Hollywood are not represented. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot to offer artistically and a, a lot to offer entertainment wise. And that's what it is. At the end of the day, we're entertaining people. We have 100%. this drive to entertain, which, yep. which, which is, is it gonna, this is, gonna, I'm gonna do something new on the show. We okay. did it once before, and it was actually just kind of on a whim. But um, first, I just want to ask about training, and it just kind of doesn't matter. Um, sure. You, you've trained. Um, you have in various schools. Um, I'm guessing as most actors in Hollywood, if you, you're not part of an improv group or a writing group or uh, in a class and, you know, holding a, a survival job and waiting for the next callback, then you're not doing what you should be doing. So I'm guessing you've been out there doing stuff. Now, have you have you much improv experience or uh, or training? So hilariously enough, uh, no. Uh, I uh, have been told like tons of times that I would be really good at improv, and I agree with that. But the problem that happens is, is I can I could probably improvise with the best of people on the planet Earth not on a stage. It's this very weird concept of someone telling me to do something. And I'm just like, this is weird. Like, I'm not, I'm not against it. it does it just, it's just this weird brain, my brain where I'm like, oh, okay. Like I, yeah, sure. I'll try to set the structure in there and whatnot. And like, it's just very weird. So I, I, I can I relate to that. Uh huh. I, I don't, I, I don't, can. I don't doubt that I, I could, if I put my, my mind to it and like went into it and did it more, I would be better off. But I took, I had an option to, to go to the, um, to go to UCB and I, I was making the choice of either improv or sketch writing. And I think improv is one of the most phenomenal things of all time. I used to go to the um, ASCAT shows at uh, UCB, uh, which if you've never been are the free improv, Im improvised shows that they did on Sunday nights at the UCB Franklin, uh, just a great institution of improvisers and whatnot. Um, and I really wanted to do it. But then something told me that creatively, creative wise, I would be tr selling myself short if I didn't go into sketch writing, because at the end of the day, what's nice about sketch writing is I'd have six, six sketches at the end of it that I could do in film and, and they would be mine. So I made the creative choice to go down the sketch writing path because of the idea of, well, whether it's good or bad, there's a finished product. And, right. and I, I, can, I can do with it what I please because it's all mine. Uh, so I, so that was kind of like one thing. And then I started at the, um, art of acting studio back in 2012, 2000, um, uh, well, maybe 11. Um, and I was a part of the inaugural class of that, that studio. Um, so they were a branch off of the Stella Adler theater in New York, and they decided to make a, uh, an LA, uh, branch. And I was a part of that first class and there was only six of us and it was an intensive, which was great. Uh, so we, we got we got a lot, a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with, with great teachers. And I was pretty much just consumed with that, uh, for two years. Um, and then I kind of just went on my own merry way and, and of, uh, you know, day job kind of took over for a little bit of time and I didn't start taking acting incredibly seriously, like headshot resume, all that stuff kind of, you know, I dabbled here and there until about, yeah, 20, 2018 is when I started like booking other things, booking commercials, um, you know, taking it more seriously, kind of keeping my craft up, go, getting back into classes. So it's been a little bit of a journey. Right on. Um, 
one more question now mm-hmm. when uh like oh sorry Gosh, darn it. well um yeah. That had nothing to do with the show. It's just stupid. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, no, that could have been like a little sound bit, you know what I mean? Like just pushing the button and being like, all right, welcome for this next question. I'm like, all right. <laughs> you that question. kind of show. Right. Um, now, um, like folks back home, um, have they like seen you like in, a, in, in commercials or like when you report back home and then you strangely get this, like a cousin or someone calling you say, Hey man, I just saw you on TV. Have you uh, had that experience? It just happened. And let me tell you All guys, right. anyone, anyone as an actor, uh, I, I'm, I am one of the type of actors that well, I like to keep my shoulder down because it's good when it's good and it's bad when it's bad. So I try to keep myself as, as medium as I possibly can be. I celebrate when I book, but I try not to be like, hey, guys, like on set, like, here we go. Like, I, I try my hardest to say, like, this is the opportunity I get and this is what I'm doing and I'm going to do that. But with that being said, whenever you are humbled like that, when people call or text or message you out of the blue saying, hey, I just saw you on TV. It's it's pretty great. It's I will tell you guys, it's a pretty awesome experience. It's not. It's not anything that's like, wow, I did good, like specifically for commercial work, because obviously it's commercial work. Um, and don't, don't get me wrong. There's there is a craft to that of being able to say one singular line mm, 17 right. different ways. Right. But with that, being said, yeah, exactly. <laughs> with, with, that, with that being said, um, it's just night nice, like it's people. Are, no, no one's like, hey, you're wow. You're really good in that commercial. Everyone's just like, <laughs> hey, that's really cool. I saw you. And that is such a like a great it's such a cool feeling to like random random people that I don't remember. They're just like my old boss who um, was just like, hey, I saw you. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like just incredibly random people just saying like I saw this someone from my acting um, my acting class, uh, you know, when I started was just like, hey, we just saw it like everyone's celebrating that. So it feels nice to to have that experience happen. My my family saw me. My brother called me at like 6 a.m. He was like, I just saw you on TV. So that was like um, that's been a really really that's that one's been really fun. So I'm hoping to in the next year raise that to television status. Nice. There you go. That would be nice. I'm hoping I'm hoping to raise. I mean, it's it is my commercial is currently on TV, um, but I'm hoping to get to get, you know, guest star or whatever the right, uh, right under five, you know, whatever. Some recognition, some recognition. So, yeah. <laughs> but also to be able to be, to say that I'm good to say, like to kind of show off like, Hey, yeah, you said, you know, can I get you a, a cheeseburger with that or whatever? Very well <laughs> um, <laughs> to the lead actor, you know, I, I just like, wow, that guy's got moxie. I'd be like, thanks guys. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping for in the next year to, to join. Um, I'm not a part of the union specifically right now, um, which is obviously like a really big thing with actors, like join when you're ready, join. And I, right. you know, I don't, I don't, I feel like I could be ready now. I did a commercial. I did, it, but you never know. It, it could get swallowed up whole. It is one of those things. But if I, right. if I believe my mentality, the cream will rise to the top. I have to work hard at doing it. That is what will happen. The, so, and the work will come mm-hmm. and whether it's union or non-union work is really not going to make any difference to you, whether or not you choose to join the union. Right. There, it'll it'll come at you, and and at that third job, they're gonna go well, and you'll go okay. Here you go. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> here's here's yeah. Like I said, so that's what I'm I'm hoping for the next year is is to uh, get a job that that pushes get a job that's worth me to push in into the union, which would be right. Awesome. Right. So, um, man, it sounds like you're on a great path. Um, I had an odd thought, which actually you just kind of solidified through this whole meeting. Um, and you know, a lot of, uh, being an actor comes down to casting, you know, and for whatever reason, um, and it's just, like I said, it's been solidified since I've been talking to you. I think you should do something with Dave Chappelle (laughs) because I'm reminded, I'm reminded of this joke. I'm reminded of this joke that he did about, um, this, uh, interracial couple, uh, a Chinese woman and a Mexican guy. And when he described the Mexican guy, he said, I couldn't really tell what this guy was. I know he could have been an Indian guy, could have been an Italian guy. I didn't know. Uh, when I asked, he just looked up and said, "I'm Mexican, bro." And for whatever reason, for whatever reason, hey, yes, I'm, I am so happy you just told me that. 
<laughs> and thinking about talking to you and then after talking to you, I'm like, yeah, man, you need to do something with Dave. And he does sketch. So no, he needs another show. He needs another Dave, show. You can Dave, help him out. Dave <laughs> is, uh, is a, uh, just a straight up hero. I, I, just one of the biggest comedy uh, heroes of mine. And, and, and specifically, um, I was actually having this discussion with my, um, so just to plug my other, my podcast, I have a, well, I have a, <laughs> I have a, an MMA podcast that I do with my, uh, my really good friend, um, Juice. Um, it's called the Friendly Sparring Pod. And we just watch the, uh, the, the UFC fights on Saturday and we review them on, su- on Sunday. And we're very relaxed about it. We're not like very, uh, he's more, he's more cut and dry about it. And I'm more like, let's have fun with it. And we're both, we have a really good banter. So anyway, I was just talking about it because someone asked like who our favorite comedian was. And Dave Chappelle was the answer I gave specifically because he is one of the most amazing storytellers on the planet Earth. Yeah. Uh, his, he's, he's really funny, but he's also uh, like a really, really, really dumb, like dumb good storyteller. Yeah. His jokes that are littered in in his stories are he makes you pay attention. And his, some of his jokes were like eight, nine minutes long. But he, the story he's telling to make you go along with it, you're just like, yes, yes. And when yeah. he finally gets to it, you're just like, that's that's incredible. So working with Dave would be one of the one of the, my lifelong dreams of, of all time. That him <laughs> and um, uh, Paul Thomas Anderson. That's my that's my that's my golden one. That's my golden goose. Okay, so since my ADHD is kicking in, you're fine. Um, <laughs> since, <laughs> since you mentioned MMA. I'm uh-huh. a huge, huge MMA fan, right? Oh, great. Um, and what were your thoughts on Conor McGregor in the whole injury? I thought that my personal opinion is, you know, suck it up, Irish boy. Like, wow. I, I, I just, I was like, no, nah, I'm not impressed. I think he, I think he's all talk. And I love Conor McGregor. I do. I truly do. But... He likes the Irish boys. I, yeah, I thought I loved those Irish lads. You did what? I don't love him. Okay, for what he's for what he's done for the sport, Mm -hmm. fantastic. Like we cannot the superstar status of that stuff. But Mm -hmm. when it comes to like what we are now of the MMA and all the stars that are out there now, it's pretty bad for the sport. We need to kind of get away from his kind of ideal because you know money where your mouth is concept he did it until he didn't you know what i mean right exactly and that is what's very unfortunate about his yeah you know his trash talking was like i talk and i back it up and everyone's like yes for the first now you don't and now you do not at all and then you know just i mean the fall from grace seeing him on the canvas yelling at Dustin Poirier and everyone like Dr. Stoppage, Dr. Stoppage. That's not this. That's not that. It's just like, this is insane. And to be honest with you, nobody wants to see the third, but as we know in the fight game and, and, and they're, it's going to put butts in seats, but, <laughs> but, but Dustin Poirier is going to give him the business again. And it's not, it's he's Connor's just not, gonna win he's he, he just he's, he's already self-defeated himself he's going around did you guys just see him pitch at the chicago cubs game no i okay. missed that after this go on twitter i will and just watch oh, it God. ladies and gentlemen worst throw i've ever seen in my entire life and it's crazy it's not even it's crazy but anyway I, I, I digress how conor mcgregor should handle the injury it was a terrible industry industry injury i know it was but but now, like I said, the problem is, is that his ego is just like what it is. It's, it's very unfortunate. So anyways, I love talking about MMA. It's great. Okay. Give me the name of your podcast. It's called the Friendly Sparring Podcast. Friendly. I saw your logo with the gloves, right? Yes, gloves. that's right. The, the gloves, the, the, yeah, that was done by our friend, uh, Dave Fretz, who actually does, uh, he did a, the one for, uh, MMA fighters podcast. The fighter's name is Ally Aquinta and he, he does uh, designs for that. Those people too. So uh, we've been very lucky to have him. And uh, I, I, like I said, what's been nice about the the podcast is um, my friend like really like had to push me to do it because I was like I don't know. And then because he's been doing it for a long time, and he was and I finally now doing it. It's like 
okay, this is a fun environment. It's a fun space to be in. We've yet to yeah. do, it's only been me and him. So we've yet to do like any like interviews or anything like that. But I like, what hey man, doing. start yeah. reaching out. So you, you all should reach out to, and it could be like the guy next door that's getting buffed to go fight in somebody's backyard. That's start true. With him. That's start true. With him. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> what you guys are doing, right? Cause I'm getting buffed in a backyard right now. So heck yeah. <laughs> For this, you know what I mean? Acting wise, but. Hey, buff now, Dave Chappelle tomorrow. Oh man, if only. <laughs> I'm calling Please. it. I'm call you're it. speaking into existence, and I, I will, I will come running. I tell you. Oh, ooh, let's speak some things into existence. Keanu Reeves, where you at, my friends? Just like oh, him being there with you right now. Right. That's okay. what? That's what she's talking about. She what? Just you know what? I, hilariously <laughs> enough, I I just got a text from him. He said twenty. 25 minutes. So just, just you wait. 25 minutes. minutes. I'll be here in 25, <laughs> 25 minutes. minutes. Just you wait. Standing. I know Leo, exactly where, you're my new bestie. I know exactly and... where you live and I sent him your address. So have fun. Oh, amazing. Yay. A very humbly nice man. <laughs> he seems like he would be. So yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay. So <laughs> We're going to blame this on my ADHD as well. I love it. Um, <laughs> what commercial are you in that people were recognizing you from? Uh, breathe Right. Is that, what is it? Breathe Right, the nasal strips. Breathe you know? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's funny. The, uh, I'm only one of the, I think it's six six or seven like vignettes uh my part is like three seconds long um yep. you know like uh, of the thing and uh i'm also i i'm not i'm unofficially well let me just put it this way if you go to breathe right.com right now <laughs> guess, guess whose face you're gonna see on it right here All this right. Guy. And, and and by and by guess <laughs> whose face i mean you don't have to guess because it's right at the top like it's awesome I, I, it was weird. What like one night I, I literally just went to the website and I was like, okay. Like I, I, I was just like <laughs> stunned. Read right yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Which like it's also like kind of a weird thing for an actor to kind of like like uh for like the first couple of times that people started to say, Hey, like I noticed you on the commercial and whatnot, I was like, Is that cool? Like, is that like you know, and it's like <laughs> it feels weird. Like I'm happy that I did the accomplishment, but you know, it's like you just get this weird like what what else am I going to be doing after this? Like, am I just going to be remembered as the breathe right guy or what else can I be doing? And, and I, I mean, just to be very incredibly candid with you guys, I had, I had a lot of like imposter syndrome on that, on that set. Um, and uh, that was, a, that was an interesting experience. And, and I've had it, I've had it a couple times now and I'm hoping that with more productions, it kind of goes away. But um, when I breathe right, just, I show up, you know, I get there and I think it just has to do with the mass of, of production. You know, you see like 60 people running around, like, like their heads are cut off, you know, and like, like 14 trucks and all this stuff. And I'm just like, Oh, you guys, you guys got the wrong guy. You guys, <laughs> you guys picked the wrong person to say this line. Like it just, it just, uh, you know, and I go to set and I sit down and there's like four extras. Um, and then by the time it's my call time, there's 60 extras. And I'm like, what? Yeah. I'm like, what? I'm like, I'm like, Wait, what no the trailer? heck is happening? Oh, I love it. No trailer? I'm digging this. I'm right. digging, I'm digging this, this naturalness of this. But anyway, um, but anyway, uh <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um the teenager, it's not natural. Uh, it's the most natural. <laughs> it's all, great. It's, I I'm I'm always weird. so nervous about that, and I'm happy that it happened. Someone just came in, but not for me, for them, and I love it. It's the best, guys. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. But anyway, uh, it, it was, uh, yeah, it was weird. It, it's weird. And then like, you know, like I, I, I've done background work and, I, and I've, I, I've seen, and that, that separation has always been weird to me. So like, have you ever been in that place where you were, you, you were, okay, you did background work. I did background work too when I worked. Um, and then you do a principal thing and then you look at, out into the background players and you see people that actual people you used to stand around with no no I, no i that i never I I, I I got i got out of, no. <laughs> i got out of, i got out of the background experience pretty fast only because 
of the weird delusion that it creates for people. Oh, yeah. uh, it's strange. Now, now don't get me wrong. I, I, I think that there's, a, first of all, you are doing a job and it's great. And as actors, that is something that we need to do. But the delusion that would happen for me, it never, it never actually did get this far. But I just remember talking with um, someone at my job a little bit later and, and, you know, he came into work after he had left, you know, and everyone's like, where'd he go? Blah, blah. He comes in. He's like, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I just did a movie with Christian Bale. And like my brain was like, I can't process this. I can't. Wow, that's cool. That's really cool. So then I start talking to him more and more and more. And then it just like starts going on and on. He's like, yeah, there was like 60 of us. And like we walk into this room and and then like the, these gunshots go off. And like, you know, Christian Bale's in a tank like 200 feet away from me. And I was like, uh-huh. OK. And then I was like, oh, and then and then I had done a, a background work for um uh, before that I had done background work for project X and I realized like the job is the job. And I remember that was the, the first time like I learned super fast, like within the first three days, I, it was, uh, it was for like a party um, movie. So they needed extras all the time okay. on the first day. I was like, okay, like maybe I'll get near the camera and like, maybe someone will spot me. <laughs> the, the third day they started sending people home. And then I was like, oh, okay. And then I just heard someone say, Oh, we've seen you too much. You can go home. Not to me, but to someone else. So what I did from that on, I checked in and just walked as far away from the camera as I possibly I could. And just and I did uh 16 days on that thing. And I was like, Yeah, read your book. Exactly. A hundred percent. I was like, F that. Yeah. So it it just and I realized that there's a lot of people that just don't don't understand that. Like they're just like, oh, like, you know, if someone sees me, so you know, everyone everyone always refers to the Megan Fox story. And I'm like, it's such a one in a million situation yeah. and there's a there's craft that there's craft to acting there's a there's you know what i mean like there's there's a lot so like i said it's kind of like this weird divide for me it's like it is a job but like you know it's not the job no yes yeah if you could look at it that way so it's fun though uh, it it's is. It's great. Oh, of course. <laughs> and you see that old guy that you used to stand next to and would ask you for your apple out of your box lunch Oh, now you're man. looking at him and he's just grip he's just like grimace statue as you're walking over with your your plate under the yeah. tent and yeah just, yeah yeah you wave at the lady you used to sit next to that would speak spanish to you and you don't speak spanish you're just like oh. <laughs> how 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 nice how nice of a transition <laughs> yeah so uh <laughs> <Trailer>. well, yeah <laughs> yeah that that that's the i think that's the next that'll probably be the next one for me is the is the next milestone uh, will be will be a trailer. I think will be my next milestone. It's gonna happen. If, if not, if not another commercial. Uh, I mean, I'm hoping for another commercial. Uh, in time. Uh, but if not, if not a that that'll be the next bigger milestone. And then from there, hopefully, like I said, it just all starts racking in, baby. Right. Hey, well, we're pulling for you, Leo. Thank you. For Thank sure. you, guys. Definitely. Um, now, do you want to plug any social media or anything that's uh, dropping on YouTube or anywhere else? Uh, right now. No, I mean, uh, you can follow me at LeoGH2113 on Instagram and uh, Twitter and all those stuff. I mean, I don't really, I'm not super active social media wise, just for whatever reason. Um, but uh, the next thing that's going to be dropping for me uh, is, a, is a horror film, uh, a student horror film that I did um, that a lot of people seem to be liking. Um, so we'll see. They're going to be, they're going to be dropping that hopefully in October, which is good timing. Um and then that's about it at this point. Uh, you know, auditioning all the stuff, everything away. Hopefully, oh, also, if you haven't watched it, the NHMC Latin X streaming showcase where these two lovely people found me. Uh, right. <laughs> please, uh, please check that out. That's that's online until the 15th. Um, and if you want to cast me, just just message me. Just tell me you want to do something <laughs> with me and I'll, I'll be there. Cast the man. Let's cast the man. What else am I doing, right? Definitely check out the showcase. The showcase is amazing. There's a mixture of short films that are definitely entertaining. I fully, fully stand behind that. (laughs) I'm I'm excited for for it too because this is the first time they're doing it, and I'm happy that I was able to be a part of the new transition into into what the old showcase style was into what it is now like like shorts and scenes and stuff like that is is definitely what it is i mean it's even crazier to think that 
we're we're past like this transition of what you need to book or what you need to be a professional actor is just moved so quickly in the last 10 years. You know, first it was, um, you know, headshot resume. Then all of a sudden reels were a big thing. Now they're just like one scene and that's it. They're, they're just like, we just need, we, we, we want, we want, we don't even want, we want less than two minute scenes and that's it. The real, and the reels were, were their numbers were getting smaller. And then all of a sudden everyone's just like, just clip it out, clip all your stuff out and, and just send us what you think is right for that, that role specifically. And I was like, mm, wow, wow, it's progressed so far along. I, I was trying to start up a real company and I technically still am. I mean, I probably still could um, uh, for a little bit of time. Uh, and it's now, like I said, I was like, I can do, you know, three scenes in under two minutes. And now it's like, I can do a scene for you. Like, cause it, wow. the times are changing. They just want like this, this person's looking for this specifically. And that's, that's that. And I'm like, Oh, so, so they, I don't, they basically cut out the first meeting. Yeah, they, they really did. They, they, they wow. just cut the progression has just become so much. That they're just like, you have to play that character in a scene already in order for us to even consider that you can even Great. do it. It doesn't even have to do with, wow. yeah, it doesn't even have to, yeah, it doesn't even have to do with if you can act or not, you could be the best actor or not, but if you're not playing the type of character that they need, they're like, oh, okay, see you around. And that's, but that's always what it's been. I mean, casting has always been about that. It's always been sure. just like, if you're this thing or that, your hair cuts a certain way, all that stuff, you don't know what it could be. So just go in there and do the best that you could possibly do and present the best work that you can possibly do. And that's it. That's all we've ever been able to do. So here we are. That's awesome. Well, Leo, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Yeah. It has truly been a pleasure to to hear your story and get to chat with you for a bit. Um, listeners, as usual, Rebel is going to ask you to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> and um, drop us a line on there so we know what you're thinking. If you have any ideas for future guests, I'm open to that. So let us know. Until next time, see you guys. Bye. Bye now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Leo.